you know what? One drink is not going to hurt me. One pill isn't going to be that big of a deal. One puff is not going to be too much. Eventually, that's going to lead you down the wrong path. An alcoholic or a drug addict, the first one is what it takes. As soon as you take the first drink or the first drug or the first hit or the first or you shoot up the first time, you're done. You are finished. You also may want to question spending too much time with the people you relapsed with in the past as well. So for me, when I first got clean and sober, I completely removed myself from the people I drank and used with. Hello, my friend, and welcome to another episode of I Love Being Sober, sponsored by Camelback Recovery, Arizona's preferred sober living option to help AA newcomers stay sober during their first year in the program. If that's you or someone you know, then you're in the right place because my name is Tim Westbrook and I'm the CEO and founder of Camelback Recovery here in the always sunny and always sober Scottsdale, Arizona, where my team and I over the course of many years have helped thousands of people to stop their suffering and continue on their path to recovery. Let's get clear on one thing. We believe that a relapse or a slip is not a part of recovery. And that's exactly why this podcast is dedicated to you or any loved one you know in their first year of striving to live a clean and sober life. The purpose of this podcast is to come clean with all of the misinformation that's out there about recovery, addiction treatment, mental illness, and the strategies to stay sober in general. So if you believe you're in the right place, Or if you know someone who is struggling with addiction, it's my privilege to share this podcast with you. Now, I have no idea if you and I have ever met, but what I do know is that AA saved my life. And I also know that to find long-term recovery and live happy, joyous, and free, it's not just about stopping your drinking, drugging, gambling, sexual indiscretions, or any other addiction you may have struggled with or suffered from. Because at Camelback Recovery, we believe that sobriety can and should be fun. And look, any recovery process is not easy. It is challenging. It can sometimes be annoying. And for the most of us, it is often difficult to stay on the path. But here's the good news. The self-awareness you gain from listening to this podcast, especially if you're in your first year of recovery, will help you make better choices, which will ultimately lead you to live in a kick-ass sober life. Visit CamelbackRecovery.com to learn more about our treatment strategies for alcoholism, drug addiction, or mental illness. And we even offer recovery coaching so that you can enjoy the freedom and happiness you've always searched for. Welcome to the 82nd episode of I Love Being Sober, the show devoted to people in their first year of sobriety. If you are pressed for time, listen at 1.5 times speed, and you will still get all of the content from this episode. No need to take notes because I've paid a professional note taker to do that for you. The notes to this and other episodes are available when you look for them at ilovebeingsober.com. Please do that when you're done listening to this episode. You'll be glad you did. And that's my personal pledge to you for listening in its entirety. Now, although your first year in sobriety is central to our discussions, you and I will also explore other fascinating and important topics such as health and fitness, self-care, food, nutrition, breath work, biohacking, meditation, just to name a few. All of these things are your gateway to live in a kick-ass sober life, which is our mantra at Camelback Recovery. In episode 82, you'll learn about the fifth mistake that leads to a relapse along with how to avoid it. We're going to talk about mistake number five, and you'll discover that hanging out with the friends you drank and used with is the fifth mistake people make that leads to a relapse, along with why it is so important to avoid this mistake if you want to avoid a slip. I will share my experience with how I was able to avoid this mistake, and based upon what you hear, you'll be able to figure out how it works for you. So lean in, listen carefully because this episode could have a significant impact on how you can make it to a year and much closer to living a kick-ass sober life. And also, this podcast is like an AA meeting or like an NA meeting or CA meeting in that everybody that's listening is here to either 
get clean and sober, struggling to stay clean and sober, thinking about getting clean and sober, or maybe you have a loved one that you think needs to be clean and sober. So whatever it is, if you learn anything or if you hear anything that resonates with you throughout this episode, please let us know in the comment section of YouTube or Apple or wherever you're listening. What you share might resonate with someone else and possibly save them from a relapse or maybe even save their life. Every review and every comment gets us that much closer to helping one more person or one more family. So don't be shy and be sure to share what resonates with you in the comment section. The fifth mistake you must be aware of if you want to avoid a slip is hanging out with friends you drank and used with. As they say... If you hang out at the barbershop too long, you are eventually going to get a haircut. Your old friends who are still drinking and using are not going to support your new lifestyle. Even if they say they're in support, they live life a certain way and their behaviors do not support sobriety. No matter how dead set you are on staying clean and sober, if you are hanging out with people that are still using, there will eventually be a time when your self-will is not strong enough to keep you away from a drink or a drug. Eventually, you're going to be triggered. Eventually, you're going to be weak. Eventually, there's going to be a time where you think to yourself, you know what? One drink is not going to hurt me. One pill isn't going to be that big of a deal. One puff is not going to be too much. Eventually, that's going to lead you down the wrong path. An alcoholic or drug addict, the first one is what it takes. As soon as you take the first drink or the first drug or the first hit or the first or you shoot up the first time, you're done. You are finished. You also may want to question spending too much time with the people you relapsed with in the past as well. So for me, when I first got clean and sober, I completely removed myself from the people I drank and used with. I was not willing to hang out with those people at all for my first year, at least my first year. And so remember, this episode is dedicated to people in their first year. If you're in your first year of recovery, you've got to give yourself a chance. You've got to give yourself a chance. The way you give yourself a chance is by cutting out the people that you drank and used with. That's one of the biggest mistakes I see. I've seen lots of people that continue hanging out with their old friends. It never, 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 ever ends well. People that hang out with friends they drank and used with always go back out 100% of the time, eventually. And it might not happen today. It might not happen tomorrow. It might not happen even in a week or two weeks. But eventually, 100% of the time, it will happen. You will go back out. The environment always wins. Willpower doesn't work, as Dr. Benjamin Hardy says. You will eventually go back out. I also see this in the rooms of AA. I see this with our clients at Camelback Recovery. Newcomers are often not willing to let go of their friends that they drank and used with. I get it. I understand. These are the people that you're familiar with. These are the people you have relationships with. These are the people that you've been spending all of your time with for the last, who knows, year, two years, five years, 10 years. It's really hard to cut those people out of your life. I mean, okay, actually, it's not really hard. It seems like it's going to be really hard. Once you make the decision that you want to be clean and sober, you've got to start doing things that your future self will do. So many times people think that they can stay clean and sober while continuing to hang out with their old friends. They think that their self-will is going to keep them sober. They think that they will be able to get their friends to do what they do. They think they're going to be able to get their friends to want to be clean and sober. I've seen this all the time. I see it. And it doesn't work. News alert, your friends that are still in the disease are not ready to be clean and sober. If and when they are ready, they will come to you. If and when they are ready, they will let you know. I promise you, they will let you know. The 12-step program is a program of attraction for a reason. That is the only way it's going to work. People don't like being told what to do. Think about when you were in the disease. Did anybody tell you that you needed to quit? Did anybody tell you that you drank too much, that you used too much, that you were going to die? Did anybody tell you that before you were ready? How did that work out? Stick with people that are living the life that you want. Stick with people that have what you want. As Jim Rohn said, you are the average of the five people that you hang out with. It's much easier to pick people that are already where you want to be. I'm in the middle of reading a book right now. It's called Be Your Future Self Now 
The subtitle is The Science of Intentional Transformation, another book written by Dr. Benjamin Hardy. You are in the middle of massively transforming your life. Humans are not driven by the past. Rather, we are pulled forward by the future we're most committed to. So what future are you committed to? What do you want your life to look like? What do you want your future to look like? Who is in your circle of five? Does every single person in your circle of five have what you want? Does every single person in your circle of five, are they all living the life that you want? If they're not, then it's time to replace some of those people. And I've done that. I've had to do that many times in my life. When you surround yourself with people that have what you want, that's going to pull you. It's going to pull you up. It's going to pull you up to the future self that you want to be. Your environment and the people you spend your time with is going to have a massive influence on whether or not you're able to stay clean and sober. Remember, you are developing new healthy lifestyle habits, a new way of living. And if you spend your time with people that are engaging in your old behavior, your past, you're eventually going to fail. The path of least resistance is to go back to doing what you were doing. Spend your time with people that like doing healthy activities that support your new way of living. Put yourself in an environment that is conducive to your recovery, that is conducive to getting you to where you want to be. So here's a quick review about the insights you and I both rediscovered in this 82nd episode of I Love Being Sober. The fifth mistake people make that leads to a relapse is hanging out with friends you drank and used with. We also talked about why avoiding this mistake is imperative if you want to avoid a relapse. And I shared my experience with myself and with other people and what I've seen. And based upon what you've heard in this episode, you can figure out how it works for you. And remember, these insights will only work for you if you work them. So please make sure you apply what you've learned in this episode of I Love Being Sober. Because if you do, you will be on your way to living a kick-ass sober life. I think you'll agree that's exciting to think about. And speaking of reviews, before we end this episode, I want you to go to the review section on iTunes or leave a comment in YouTube and type in one thing that resonated with you. Every comment counts. What you share could resonate with someone else that is struggling and potentially save their life. You also be asked to rate this episode and I hope I've earned five stars from you. So go ahead and share the one thing that resonated with you in the review section of iTunes or YouTube or wherever you're listening, and it'll take just three minutes out of your day. But what you share could not only save you, but it could also save someone's life. Okay, that does it for the week. I'm Tim Westbrook, and I hope that our paths cross again next week for I Love Being Sober, the show devoted to people in their first year of sobriety. Sound good? And do whatever it takes to join me for episode number 83, because we're going to dig into the frequently asked questions from the five secrets to avoid a relapse and the five mistakes that lead to a relapse. I will share my experience with this mistake along with how. So I encourage you to invite a friend, a loved one, or a sponsee to listen to I Love Being Sober. I can't wait to connect with you then. It will be an insightful episode. So I really want you to join us with your loved one. 